Welcome back to another animations video and in today's episode we will be talking about how to set up some states for our animations and also how to replicate those. We're not going to talk about the moving and walking animations and all that stuff in this video. We're just going to show a, uh, how to set up some basic states and how to replicate those. So uh, the first thing that we need is to... Uh, well, first I'm actually going to change the character itself so that I have a blank character without any animations whatsoever. So for that, I'm going to change the character's mesh to a different one. Obviously, you can use any mesh you like. I'm just going to simply have the one that I showed in the previous episode. So here is my male character. And right now, all he's going to do is simply T-pose. And he still is able to walk around because the actual visual part doesn't, uh, doesn't change anything when it comes to movement. So he's a little bit higher in the air. So let's just move him a little bit downwards. There we go. So in order to make him animate automatically, we need a thing that is called the animation blueprint. Because right now we could select our third person animation blueprint, but nothing is going to work because those anim animations are not meant for him. So let's go ahead and let's create an animation blueprint for our character. Let's go to animations and let's select animation blueprint. Now we need to select his specific skeletal and I have a male skeletal over here, which is working for all of my male characters. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one, click OK, and I'm going to call this male anim BP. Let's open this up. And right here, inside of this blueprint, we have the outpost. So this is what is going to be playing for the animation. And we can create a thing that is called a state machine, which will allow us to swap between different states and come out with a specific animation. So let's go ahead, let's open that up. And from the entry, we need to go ahead and create some kind of a state. So let's call this, I'm going to call this default. Usually this one will be your walking, idling state, but we're going to talk about that in the next video. In this one, we're just going to have some default position, which is simply going to be my idle position. So let's bring in our animation. We can see all of our uh, character, this specific, this specific skeletal's animations over here in the asset browser. If you don't have that, then you can go to the windows and here you can enable the asset browser. But by default, it should be over here. So then let's connect our uh, breathing animation to the output pose. And then if we go higher, higher, we can see over here already instantly by default, it will go to this state and our character is going to be idling. So now if we would open up our character, select the mesh and then give him his animation blueprint, which we called a uh, male animation BP, male anim BP. Uh, I have two of those. I hope this is the one. Yeah, that's the one. So let's go ahead and let's hit play. Our character is idling. Now, obviously, we will walk around and nothing's going to happen. He will have the same state all the time because that is his default pose and we don't have anything for walking as of right now. So now let's see how we can change his state into a different one and also how we can replicate those specific animations. So for that, so that we could go from one state to another, we need to drag from this state and create another state and let's call this let's call this drink because i have a drink animation so let's go ahead and let's open this one up and we have the drinking animation so let's bring that in connect to the outpost and now we have two different states uh, that allow two different animations but we already have an error which says will never be taken please connect something to can enter transition which is this piece right here this arrow one so we need a condition which will allow us to go from this state into this state right now we don't really have any i have accidentally made two we just need one we need to create some kind of uh, basically some kind of variables that will allow this to happen and it requires us to enter a boolean value which should always be true if uh, if it's false it's never going to go there so we always need this to uh, be true so let's go ahead let's open up our character and let's create ourselves a variable and i'm going to call this is drinking and it's going to be just a regular boolean so now in the event graph, instead of this thing that I have right here, I'm going to use keyboard key one. And all I'm going to do is on each click, I'm going to do a flip flop so that I would swap between those values. So I'm just going to set the is drinking 
on both of these and I'm going to use is A because if it's once we click the first time it's going to say true the other time it's going to say false and it's going to set that specific value so it's basically like a toggle toggle thing and then we need to have this condition inside of our animation blueprint but by default there isn't any so we need to go to the uh, event graph of the animation blueprint and here we have an event called event blueprint update animation now this thing gets ran all the time and this is where we can receive uh, the updated information from our character so we're here we can just simply cast to our character so I have the third person character and the object should be the try get pawn owner, which will return obviously the character. Now from the third person character, we can get our variable called is drinking. So we want to get that because that's living inside of our character. And then we want to promote this to a variable inside of our animation blueprint. And I'm going to leave it with the same name is drinking. There we go. Now. Every time we update it in our character, it's going to instantly be updated inside of our animation blueprint as well. So now we can go ahead and go back to our state machine, select our transition route and plug in our is drinking. So whenever this is going to be true, the character is going to go to that animation. But once it gets there, it has no uh, route back basically. So we can just simply drag from the drinking and go back to the default state. But for that, again, we need to set up a condition when it's going to do that. Now, if we would drag in our uh, is drinking variable and connect, connect it like so, uh, it is going to create like an infinite loop. It's going to go to that drinking condition, but it's instantly going to go back and it's going to keep on rotating constantly because it is going to be true. And when it's true, it's going to go well in a circle so over here we need the opposite value and we can flip this by getting a node called not boolean so whenever this is true this is going to return as false but when it's false it's going to return as true and that's exactly what we want we need this value to be false so that we would go back to the default state so now by creating this if we click one he's drinking and he's going to keep on drinking until we disable that animation. So we can hit one and the character is no longer drinking because that variable is set to false. Now, one more thing that we can do is uh, so that we don't have to toggle so that the character would only drink once. And that's all that would happen is we can go ahead and delete the flip flop on pressed. We can just set this to be true. And once we click this, he's going to start drinking. And now, obviously, we have no way to go back. So he's going to get stuck. But what we can do is create a animation notification. So basically, whenever we are at a certain point in an animation, we can run some kind of a code. Now, to do so, we need to go ahead and open that animation. So for my drinking, I use the drinking to animation. So this one right here, we can double click this or double click this. And it's instantly going to go to that animation. And here is our animation. Now, I already have some kind of a notification here. So I'm just going to delete that. And what we need to do is in this timeline over here, uh, not it doesn't work everywhere. It only works in this specific notifications track. So we want to right click and we want to add notify. And we want to add a new notify. And let's give this a name and let's call this stop drinking. There we go. Let's move this to the end of the animation. So at the end of the animation, he would stop drinking and go back to the default state. Now to actually assign some kind of a code for this notification, we need to go back to our animation blueprint where we can run all of our code for the animation. So again, in the event graph, here we can look for a new event called stop drinking. So we have the event anim notify stop drinking so it's always going to be event anim notify and then whatever you called your notification so here we have this guy right here and what we can do over here is again cast to our character so we can cast to the third person character we can then get uh, pawn owner and then from here what we can do is just simply set is drinking and we can set our characters drinking back to false. So whenever we reach this position inside of our animation, which uh, I've lost the, uh, there it is. So whenever we reach this point in the animation, it's instantly going to rewrite the is drinking variable and it's going to set it back to false. So now if we would hit play, click one, you will see he drinks. 
and he goes back to his default state. And we can set up as many states as we want here in our animation blueprint. We just got to make sure that we can always go back to a specific state that we would want it to go back to. Now, let's talk about how we can replicate this, because at this point, if we would, let's say, select like three characters as list and server, let's play this in specific uh, separated windows, you will see that this animation is everybody sees the same thing. But if we click one, only this character sees that he is drinking and nobody else sees him drinking. That is because, well, there is no replication to the conditions. The animation blueprint itself is already replicated. There are no issues with this whatsoever. The only issue is how we are setting our actual values inside of our character. So what you want to do first is make sure that the variable itself is replicated. There we go. Also, we want to make sure that the character itself is replicated, which by default it is. So no worry about that. So the variable is replicated. And also we got to make sure that we run uh, the event on server, which is actually setting up this variable. So this event right here is a key event. So there is no way to make this into a um, server event. So what we need to do is go ahead and create ourselves a new custom event. And let's call this server set is drinking. Now let's make sure that this event is ran on server. And then we want to set our is drinking through this event right here. So then on keyboard key one, we want to run our server set is drinking. So now if we would hit play now, you will see that he is drinking. There we go. He drinks. And then he stops drinking. Now, also the setting the variable back to the default state is already replicated because that is happening inside of our animation blueprint. And whatever we are doing inside of our animation blueprint through these notifications is replicated properly. And we barely have any issues whatsoever with this. So these are the very, very basics how to add a couple of states to this and how to replicate those animations for those states. So all we got to do is make sure that we are replicating the condition which transfers us to that specific animation. And that's basically all that we need to do to make sure that this works on the multiplayer side. So for now, this is a very, very basic animation blueprint. We're going to work on this even more. We're going to have uh, walking and all that stuff added to this one as well. So yeah, if you found this useful, make sure to subscribe to my channel to not miss the episode. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I see you in the next one.